Give thanks. Give thanks. Now, anybody who who has been hip to the to the to the matrix knows that it's not an easy book to assimilate. The thing about the matrix is you got to have prerequisite information and experience with metaphysical principles. You can't just delve into it. What he touched upon, that last one, the equividium, is way out. You got to be seriously into deep math mathematics, metaphysics, uh, combination of information that comes from inspiration, perspiration, and all forms of, uh, of focus that you are not accustomed to. This is trying to deal with the matrix is uh, running the marathon and you know you're at 350 pounds and you ain't run a step in your life. There is this very very short attention span because the kinds of con uh, con uh, constricted and very focused kind of information is written in such a way as to uh, um, I guess it's based upon the, per the, the author Val Valerian already knowing that you know what he's talking about. You see what I'm saying? You can't just go into it. So I'm just going to carve out a piece so that you could at least when you get into reading the matrix from one one kind of get your eyes and your brain ready for the type of absorption factor that you need to have in order to get into reading the matrix or understanding what the matrix is all about. Now the matrix is simply a compilation or condensation of all of what metaphysics, the metaphysics that your ancestors and, and, and ancestors from other planets have known for a long time. This is just a reawakening for uh, the European paradigm. We are trying to uh, uh, assimilate information from a second-hand source that has a whole other way of processing consciousness than we did. He's a very wordy kind of creature. He needs a lot of words to get one example of what's going on. We weren't very uh, wordy people. We essentially knew, based upon the, the condensation of language as pictographs, the condensation of languages as one word having uh, 30 to 50 different meanings, and the inflection and the consciousness tone of the voice and the specific uh, conversation would tell you what that meaning was. There was a, an economy of words, uh, though there was a vast uh, um, array of these words, there was an economy of words. All of the way that it was diagrammed or broken down for you was done by the Europeans' interpretation of what was, as well as the Europeans' interpretation after he came into Chem and began to just, um, uh, I guess, pervert what Chem really was. Now, uh, usually I give the topics of the day and try to bring you up to speed with the news. So, you know, a lot of what we were speaking about and, you know, brothers and sisters who've been into the, um, the gathering of the masters know that we are, we are at, especially governmentally and the way they're going to be controlling us, we are at a very, very crucial nexus at this point. Um, I want to go back to what is going to be news within the next few months when they start digging up all the dirt on your president, Slick Willie. And we said this about uh, about a year and a half to two years ago when we spoke about Slick Willie um, dealing with being impeached. He was impeached and a lot of people who were there thought we were playing games. He was impeached. They didn't get him out but we did say he was going to be impeached. Uh, the timeline uh, for what's getting ready to happen on his watch and what's getting ready to happen with China and how they're building China into the new uh, dragon of the East so that they could take Russia's place to get the Westerners all panicked up at spending more money, uh, taking on more security measures like giving up more of your uh, freedoms so that you now feel safe with Gestapo walking down the street, tanks and the whole nine yards. So, for the mundane, we're going to be talking about Slick Willie taking money from the Chinese. 
He took money from the Chinese, which essentially is tantamount to treason. No foreign power is supposed to be having their thumbs in your political process to influence political process so that they get you into the presidency so you can do a foreign uh, sovereign country favors based upon that. That is treason. This is what's going to get the president in the biggest trouble. Not the coke sniffing, not the drinking, not the pill popping, not the adultery, not the, the trysts in the Oval Office, not the serial killing, all right, but treason. And they're going to want to clean it up in such a way so that the American people uh, either is disenfranchised with the presidency so that the, he's the last one, or essentially uh, that the presidency now is taken over by David Rockefeller and they put in a Rockefeller who will then become uh, the president uh, by proxy or just by default. He wouldn't be elected. Now there are two main culprits in the influence peddling around uh, Clinton and it's a man called John Huang and Charlie Tree, T-R-I-E. Tree had a Chinese restaurant in Little Rock, Arkansas that Clinton loved to eat at. And when he became the president, he had a pass to get to see the president at any time. Tree showed Bill, now this is the, this is the one hand washing the other. Tree showed Bill a pipeline to unlimited Asian capital to finance all of his dreams and schemes. Now, Tree and Huang became the Washington heads of the Thai Indo gang, who are some of the best financial influence peddlers in Washington, D.C., or the District of Criminals. And they funded the, the famous Lippo sh uh, Shipping Group to the tune, now this is Lippo Shipping Group, which is like the, the Chinese Mafia, $12 billion was funded through them and they're here in the United States. Huang is one of Red China's primary arms suppliers. Where are we going with this? Huang is one of Red China's primary arm suppliers. He buys the arms for China. Everybody know where I'm going? Yeah. All right. This man was given carte blanche. Huang was given a Q16 top secret clearance into the arsenals of the United States military by Clinton after the donation through um, Gore and the rest of those people calling out the White House soliciting funds. The late Ron Brown was one of the people who was part of that when he was the, by the Department of Commerce. Okay? Huang had his pick of the candy store. He could buy anything he wanted from the U.S. military arsenal. Missiles, super advanced guidance systems, biochemical weapons, even the essential technology for the stealth bomber and the stealth fighter. He was sold it. He took it, went in there, was gave it to him. Ain't nobody, no Chinese was spying for the last 10 years. That's the way they're trying to cover their tracks. This all amounts to espionage of the highest order, but the espionage was not done by the Chinese. It was done in complicity. It was done in complicity with the Chinese government. Later, Huang had a coffee with the president to tell him how he was planning and what he was wanted to do and what he wanted to buy in his shopping spree. There are over 500 witnesses involved in the sale. 500 witnesses involved in the sale of top secret technology to the Chinese and their peddling influence to buy Ameri the American presidency. Gore is also in this scandal up to his eyeballs. Clinton will step down. This is one of the, uh, this is one of the scenarios. Scenario one, Clinton will step down to avoid a second impeachment vote on him of no confidence. Now, this is a scenario. Gore will take over and he appoints J. Rockefeller, John uh, Rockefeller, J. Rockefeller from West Virginia to be his vice president. Gore is also eventually, uh, and we have it uh, that he may be also under indictment because they still haven't closed the indictment in the investigation on Gore. 
And now uh, he, Gore, remember, was an, is, is part of the Illuminati. Were you there at the gathering of the masters when we showed you that Gore was supposed to be uh, um, uh, uh, cloned from the, the blood type, the blood genotype of um, the, the Romanovs from out of Russia? And he was uh, in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the chronology of the beast, the beast was supposed to be born in a graveyard. Now, where was Gore born? It's in Virginia. Arlington. Well, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do a thing just on him. All right? And show you that he was born not of a father-parent situation, but he was born, he was one of those people that was born in a test tube, cloning and putting together, grafting certain genes from out of the Romanovs. All right? He looked like them. He looks like one of the Romanovs, as a matter of fact. And you see him, some of the things with the beasts, and they say that the beast, when he, was, when he would be a baby, he would have a bull as a pet. And Gore's pet, when he was a boy, was a bull. I mean, the whole thing is deep. The whole thing around Gore, you're sleeping Gore. I mean, boring as hell. But everybody's sleeping Gore. All right. Both Clinton and Gore are taken out at the same time and Speaker of the House could have become president. They could put him in temporarily. At least five more women will come out of the closet on Clinton in the next few months. More than that. But none of them will be able to have any effect. The Chinese connection is what is going to bring him down. There's a little blackmail also going on between Gore and Clinton with Clinton as the blackmailee. Remember Clinton threatened to have him killed during the first term. Remember Clinton had uh, threatened him when Clinton got drunk, was coked up, and, uh, and Gore got on his nerves. And at an open meeting, he said, you could disappear. The Washington Post said, uh, the tip of the Monica Lewinsky actually, the tip for Monica Lewinsky actually came out of Gore's office. He was the one who dropped the dime on Slick Willie. Clinton's trip to China will be a disaster, but the media will eat it up. And this is, remember, we were saying this, this was told to you like 12, 13 months ago. I'm just bringing you up to date. By August, all of the following uh, on Clinton will have come to light. The Clinton crimes include two counts of drug trafficking, four counts of bribery, racketeering, and extortion, three counts of tax evasion, kickbacks, and embezzlement, 12 counts of fraud, two counts of fraudulent loans and illegal gifts, five counts of illegal co uh, campaign contributions, six counts of money laundering, uh, and yet unknown is how many um, for perjuring and obstruction of justice. Now all this is included with your girl Hillary. We haven't even counted the hundreds killed by this octopus that actually backs him up. When President Fisk actually started finding evidence, well, Richard Fisk actually started finding evidence that linked the Foster murder to Clinton, he was yanked off the case. And Starr was brought in to repair the damage and finish the cover up. Starr was one of Clinton's boys. Star was one of Clinton's boys. It was Fisk that was doing the most damage, and you notice they took Fisk out of the picture. Don't be fooled. Ken Starr is actually a Clinton stooge. He is also a representative of the Chinese Lippo Group. Now check this out. Your boy, Ken Starr, was a representative of the Chinese Lippo Group. He is a consultant to the Chinese Lippo Group. So you know what no justice is going to be done. All of it was flim and flam. Starr was picked from a short list to head the investigation. By who? Your man and mine. Janet Reno. <laughs> Notice now. The report was, and with all the information that Starr got on the dirt that Clinton was doing, he only focused on Monica Lewinsky. All right? Clinton will get away. I mean, we, we already knew that Clinton get away. We were just predicting it. And there is a second and third special report that's going on right now, a special prosecution going on around the Chinese connection. All right? Where am I? I gave you Clinton's family history. You all never got that? All right. 
Alright, now Clinton is a descendant of Rockefeller. We told you that. It's not known for sure, but Bill Clinton's real father, alright, we don't know who he was, but Virginia Kelly, Clinton's mother, had a voracious sexual appetite, we are told. Her first husband, William Blythe, was killed overseas just after World War II ended while Kelly was pregnant with Bill. Some say she was a convenient arrangement with a local county doctor to whom she was friendly and that they picked the dead man at random and forged various records in order to get military and government assistance. So Clinton was a welfare baby. Kelly was seeing a number of men when she became pregnant with Bill. This makes William Jefferson Clinton the first bastard to ever hold office in the presidency. <laughs> Kelly, his mother, was also said to be illegitimate, and birth documents obtained by Sean David Morton shows that she was in fact one of the illegitimate children of Winthrop Rockefeller a former governor of Arkansas who had an entire string of quote-unquote bastard children all across the country from Vermont to New Mexico. Most of these children have been kept carefully hidden but off track by the Rockefeller family and now hold major positions in politics and banking. The dream of the Rockefellers was for years to have a Rockefeller as the President of the United States. They came closest with Nelson Rockefeller but hit pay dirt with Bill Clinton, grandson of Winthrop Rockefeller. This would explain his unlimited campaign finance and why he was handpicked for the presidency by great uncle David Rockefeller himself. Though Clinton's blood father is not known, insiders say that the man that was keeping the most steady time with Virginia at the time and who bragged privately that Bill was a chip off the old block is four-term corrupt county sheriff Bud Canada. Canada later ran for the Arkansas State Senate where he remains a senator to this day. Bill Clinton's real name is William Jefferson Blythe. But he later changed it to Clinton after Virginia's third violent and alcoholic husband. Virginia was married six times until her death in 1993. Mama definitely was about getting it right. Now, you got a, a breakdown of that little piece of news. So when you're looking around for what this whole nonsense on the television is around the Chinese connection, don't believe the hype. The Chinese connection is one of the friendliest connections they've had overseas. All right, you got to remember too that the Chinese won the Vietnam War. And that the payout for that is opening up your arsenal. And remember, every time a country loses a war, it becomes fascist. Look at Germany after World War I. This country is now fascist as well. And it will become more and more fascist. Well, Bush is from uh, Prescott Bush's great-grandson. And he's Nazi. So if Prescott Bush gets in, they probably just change all the stars to little swastikas. Because, you, seriously, the Bush now got the CIA named after him. The George Bush uh, building. It, the CIA building now is called George Bush, George W. Bush building. You talk about b bought, lock, stock, and barrel. Serious skull and bones. Now, everybody came to hear what we had to say about Matrix and mind control. Check. Anybody see the movie? I know y'all all saw it, right? Or we're going to get deep into it. Now, now I know all of y'all, since you all are, 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 are graduates of the gathering, y'all don't go sit in front of the movies just to be entertained, do you? Y'all take notes at the movies because I know who've been my student. I see them in the movies with a clipboard. <laughs> Now, if y'all ain't going into the movies with clipboards or with tapes so that you could be making notes to yourself, then you are being entrained. You are being entrained to feel good about what's going on on the screen. You are one of Big Brother's best 
kept secrets. Now I'm going to tell you how they're settling up with technology. There's two different types of mind control. And we're going to deal with the first type of mind control for part one before we break. The first kind of mind control will then let you know what's happening with the second kind of mind control. The first kind of mind control gets real deep. This is why your metaphysical antennas got to be up at full tilt while I'm talking. Now, all of y'all here, how many of y'all into at metaphysics, the deep kind of metaphysics? Show, show a hand. All right, not too many of y'all into that deep metaphysics. Now, metaphysics is going to have to be the quote-unquote religion of tomorrow. If it isn't, you're fucked. Totally and absolutely. If you don't understand metaphysical principles, forget going to school. Forget going to work. Well, go to work. Just be blissful. And when time comes when to throw the dirt on you, then you know, just cash in. But if you are about evolving, it is time you open up that metaphysical grave that had been dug for you, the part of you, the spark that lays buried. That is what's going to open you up. That's what's going to give you the ability to escape your metaphysical mind. Damn all of what it is they're showing you out here. This is the illusion. If you saw Matrix, it had told you it's the illusion. But you didn't have to go to see Matrix because we've been telling you that for 25 years. And I know the elders have been telling you that longer than that from inside. Okay? Two types of mind control. Stay with me. Some of y'all are not going to be able to stay with me. Some of y'all are going to have to sleep. It's all right. I'm going to speak to that other side. The part that is awake. Two types of mind control. The first. And again, what I wrote down here came from inspiration. In the nighttime, when people are sleeping, I stare out at the sky, the window, and this is what you're going to have to do to pick up. Let that melatonin and melanin start to secrete, and then start picking up that information. The first kind of mind control can be viewed as consciousness containment and manipulation through biological, psychological, etheric, and spiritual colonization and terraforming. Now, what do I mean by that? What am I meaning by that? Consciousness containment and manipulation through biological, psychological, etheric, and spiritual colonization is based upon the terraforming of the blood crystals, of the blood matrix, of the flow of life and light that is now inside of you. Everybody is getting hip to how they are electronically playing with your brain. And by nature alone, your awareness of it creates specific types of light codes that help you to recognize it subconsciously and bypass the programming. It isn't working just to, stu to shove a chip in your head anymore. Because the awareness factor, people outgrow it. Just like you give somebody a cigarette for the first time and they start choking and coughing. The same principle when they put that chip inside of your head. Your body tends to become accommodating of it and if your consciousness level is strong enough, you bypass the circuitry. They're finding out more and more that mental manipulation, biological manipulation isn't working at the level they are currently practicing. So how have they gone? This is what we're going to get into. The second form of mind control is technological interfacing of gadgets with bioelectrical neuronal sites in the brain and the nervous system. Let me check that again for you. Technological interfacing with gadgets or of gadgets with bioelectric neuronal sites in the brain and throughout the nervous system. That's the technical part. That's the one we'll get into after we go to the break. Now, the topics for mind control include displacement of consciousness, the filter of experience, electronic dissolution and disturbance and rearrangement of your memory. That includes your archetypal memory. That includes you not being able to interface 
with the information that your ancestors left in the blood genes. And how are they going to do that? Another form is condensed knowledge so that you work within specific parameters and nothing else. Four or five, reality and culture is a language construct. Reality and culture is a language construct. Six, now check, and very carefully, eating is a form of information transference. Let me repeat that to you. Eating is a form of information transference. I'm going to let that sit in and digest a little bit. And I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. And why it is that they got to get to your food. And why you got to be doubly and triply careful of what it is you put into your mouth as sustenance. Seven. The lockdown in third dimensional space equals time reality through genetic reconstruction. Let me repeat that. The lockdown in third dimensional space is equal to time reality through genetic reconstruction. In other words, your genes are being manipulated to maintain the ceiling of your awareness so that you will have no light code transmissions filtering through the specific filter of experience that they're going to give you. So your experience is going to be given to you so that your experience now amounts to being you building your own imprisonment. <clears throat> Eight, synthetic telepathy. That's part of the, uh, the, 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 the technological and how they're going to play synthetic te 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 telepathy on you. S people are now who have the chips in their head have been experiencing synthetic telepathy. That was the brother that we brought to Gary Bird and to the City Sun that time, Brian Wrong, when we oh, exposed the fact that the chips were being put into people's heads all through the prison system. Who was there when we did that? You were there at the time. We exposed that. People thought we were crazy. But the, the sun, that's why they shut the sun down, people. Because the sun was dropping some serious science about what was going on on the metaphysical tip and what they were doing, the government's um, uh, control. <clears throat> Mind control is frequency warfare. Let me say that again. Mind control is frequency warfare. They ain't got to shoot no more bullets. They don't have to strap you down like they did Dr. Frankenstein and stick a node up your nose and up your ass and all up your back and in your ears and shoot electrical volts through it anymore. They can deal with frequency through the television, through your radio. And when I was speaking about synthetic telepathy, through your bones. through your bones. Now, in the electronic dissolution of consciousness, there are some extraterrestrial interferences and, and, and incursion around that. Now, some people say, well, damn, here you go. <laughs> he talking about little gray and green men running around, <laughs> sticking us and prodding us here and there. <laughs> Let's get it straight. Your ancestors were dealing with other neighborhoods long before our experience with the Caucasoid. It's all over our writings. It's all over our experience. We are extremely matter-of-fact about this. We are only getting hyped and excited about this. Why? Because he's getting hyped and excited about it. He's only now coming into the realization that there's nobody except... See, he's been going around the globe conquering and killing everybody thinking that he don't have no more strangers in here he calls his neighborhood. So there ain't nothing else for him to fear. Fear of a black planet. But now he's beginning to see that there is a wider neighborhood and a vaster amount of neighbors and that scares the shit out of him. So what does he do? He punks up and cuts a deal. This is how he has been able to make these leaps and bounds in technology. You got to remember that there is an entity which we're going to get more deeply into. There is what we call the fallen lords. At least I call them the fallen lords. 
You can call them the Elohim. You can call them the, the fallen angels and all the different names that they have for them. These are the fallen lords of light. And they do not like you are nothing more than vegetables to be grown and processed much like you saw it here. They took a piece of that for this movie. But it's much deeper than that. It's much more significant than this movie. They tried to give you a little bit more science fiction than science fact. But there's more science fact if you know where to look for it. Now frequency warfare or the electronic dissolution of memory and consciousness was developed by the CIA immediately after Kennedy was assassinated. It was a project to create electronically controlled robot killers that were programmed to kill on demand. E-D-O-M, E-D-O-M, or the Edomites. E-D-O-M means electronic distillation of memory. They change your memory around who you are and take away your identity so that the identity you have belongs to them and you kill on demand based upon what they want you to do. Edom eliminates the memory of the individual or alters the memory of events that the individual was involved in. By electronically jamming the brain, the existing acetylcholine, and that's the part of the brain, that's the part of the essence that the brain secretes for your memory, the existing acetyl, the acetyl, uh, acet acetylcholine choline, creates static which blocks both sight and sound. This method can be used to either block or erase the memory or to slow it down so that events seem to happen after they actually occurred. So you have a delay of focusing in and the chemistry that puts the picture of the experience into your memory bank is delayed. So in other words, you take a picture, they have made the solution, the picture is your experience. They've made a solution or they've done something so that the solution that keeps the, that, that develops the negative, so to speak, they've delayed it so that the negative now takes so long to become part of your memory that you recognize that it ain't be like a month or a year from now that you think it just happened yesterday. So they, they have the ability to slow down the ability for you to even make a memory or even recall a memory. This is how deep they've gotten. Excuse me? Well, yeah, it's more of a kind of a condensed form of time manipulation because it's not really time manipulation. It's time manipulation perception. The difference, yeah. Now, biological radio effects, this is again part of the, um, the, the, the technological which is going to lead you into the biospiritual uh, form of mind control. The use of very low frequency and ultrasonic affecting both electrical behavior within the brain and actual brain tissue. They have technological devices that they now have circling the planet that can affect the electrical pulses in your brain as well as the tissue of the brain in such a way to force behavioral modification and changes. There is the capability now to bounce pulses of 7 to 12 hertz off the 8 hertz ionosphere. Now the ionospheric envelope that we are in, they can bounce these particular 7 to 12 hertz waves off of it and within three pulses and train crazy and bizarre forms of energies into your brain which in turn now enlists crazy and bizarre behavior. So they could seed war or peace. They could seed fights, riots, and so forth based upon manipulation through very low frequency or what is known as VLFs and ultrasonic frequencies. All right? Now we're going to just speak about how they are going to get into dealing with mind control on a more subtle and a lot more insidious level because everybody's hip to what they're going to see. You're going to knock on your head and find a chip. It ain't going to be like that anymore. You're going to be the chip. You're going to be the one that, that is your own mind control based upon what they do to the biology in your body. Now listen very carefully. The blood is the river of life. It is also 
the river of light. Be very clear. It is not only the circulation of nutrients, but also the circulation of consciousness. Blood is the circulation of physiological consciousness, bio-spiritual consciousness. It is within the blood that you find all of the components necessary to coalesce, bring together, to bring you to higher levels of awareness. If your blood stinks, if it's filthy, if it is depraved, if it is full of garbage, you cannot, you cannot enlist or you cannot filter higher light waves through such a bloodstream and then have it convert to intelligence. It is impossible. If the blood is polluted, there is no way for you to convert higher fields of light codes into higher fields of light intelligence. It isn't going to work. Spirit feels its essence in matter. Spirit has no feelings. There is no feelings. Feelings puts matter in touch with spirit. So spirit needs matter to know what spirit is, to know what it is. So there ain't nobody floating around there and knowing everything and I know what you feel like trying to call on some ghost or some entity that never took on a physical form. Forget it. They don't give a shit about you. There is no empathy. They need to have physiological experience in order for them to set up an empathic bridge between the physical and the spiritual so that you can now. That's where your ancestors come in. That empathic bridge is based upon them having been in corporeal life. Once you're in corporeal life, the spirit has been changed. It has been, it has been um, quickened in such a way that it yearns to get back in there. That's where you put all kind of experiences on the soul, which is essentially the bridge between the spirit and the physical. So spirit feels its essence in matter. Matter, listen carefully children, matter is an envelope that seals the spirit at specific levels of awareness. Matter is an envelope that seals the spirit in to the flesh at specific levels of awareness. How light manipulates the envelope determines how the envelope is refined in order to expand it to allow the spirit to feel itself at higher and ever higher levels of awareness and consciousness. Check. Did you get what I just said? Follow me and stay with me, because it's going to get deeper. <clears throat> Once you get this perception in, your cells are now jumping around, saying, oh man, more. Feed, feed. Oh, this is like ice cream. Feed me. Because when you start getting into the knowledge or the meal that is the self, you become insatiable. And then all of this physical bullshit don't mean nothing, because you no longer have what? The appetite for it. Check? Check. All right. How light manipulates the envelope, and I'm talking about sunlight, not this light. How light manipulates the envelope determines how the envelope is refined in order to expand that envelope to allow the spirit to feel itself. Remember I said his words, to feel itself at higher and ever higher levels of awareness and consciousness to control the evolutionary advancement of the flesh, the spiritual advancement of man as well, one must seal and maintain the present envelope at its present level of self-awareness. Now, did you follow me when I said that? Because here's what is necessary to keep you in check. I'm going to repeat it now. To control the evolutionary advancement, that is the spiritual advancement and the spiritual awareness of man, one must seal hmm, and maintain the present envelope structure, which means the present perceptual matrix, the present, ah, that's a window, ah, this is a mic, uh, this is a desk kind of scenario. But these are not what I just said. These are agreements based upon our agreement to perceive them as such. Remember I said that matter is a biphenomenal effect. And the only way matter becomes hard is through the agency of man's focus on that thing. Matter has two components. Matter has two personalities, a wave and a particle. 
But when man or when the human brain is not looking at the wave, at, at matter, at its highest level, it is a waveform. But when human mind, when human thought, when human perception focuses in on that wave, it becomes a particle. So it means that the human consciousness is necessary or is an integral part in how matter coalesces into what we call reality. Are you all with me now? Because I'm getting ready to take off and if you can't stand the heights, just lay down and go to sleep a little bit. And I'm saying these things because when you understand how deep this is, when you understand the level that the beast is playing on, you now are at the field. You cross from him. Football, definitely. You know, one to one. And you the quarterback, you the front line, you the running back, you the pass receiver. You're everything. You're taking over the game now because you know how it's being played on you. So they must control the envelope at its present level of self-awareness. Now how do they structure that awareness? Through your education system, through your television, through your entertainment, through church, definitely through church. They got you in light code lockdown, boy. They really got you believing that some white man came down, laid on a cross, and saved your asses. I was hearing them coming. Man, everywhere in Carolina I went, there was a church on every goddamn corner. On Sunday when I was down there on the lecture, they were driving me there. Wasn't not a near black man or woman on the street. Everybody was in church getting their dose. Everybody was plugging in consciousness intravenously to the words of the preacher man. Sucking it in, just like you saw in the Matrix. They had my boy plugged in everywhere. Feeding on him, feeding on his light. Now, in order to maintain the envelope of your awareness, in order to make you believe that this is who you are and this is all you are going to be, they have to dysfunction the blood. They have to dysfunction the blood because it is the blood that is the crystal that takes the light and refracts it takes it and specializes it much like a prism does. When you look at white light, you take a prism and you put that prism, which is a crystal, up to that white light, boom, you get seven different colors or the perception of seven different wave bands. That's how consciousness works. It works to diffract what is inherent within the light into what you now see as those seven colors. Those seven colors become your awareness. Check? Yes. All right. Now, stay with me. The light, your blood crystals, refract the white light into what you see as consciousness. Now, a little preliminary information. The sun is your Pez dispenser. It dispenses the codes of consciousness in vectors of light. It is the sacrificial sun. What you see as the corona is the crown of thorns. You are essentially taking in light at specific frequencies and valences, refracting them through the temple, which is the crystallization of light. You are crystal light. And I don't mean that damn crystal stuff you just straight up there and drinking. I'm talking about you are crystallized light. And you are diffracting concentrated light into the reality based upon the structure and design of the temple of God. How your blood is constituted says what level of light you can process. Ooh, I see the lights are going on in some of the brothers and sisters. I better get to my blood. Well, that's why they want your blood. That's why you see all these vampire movies coming out. He needs your blood. He need to find out what's in your blood that's going to keep you around and him not. That's why want the DNA sample. There you go. Are oh, we going to get to DNA? Oh, Miss DNA. Now, there are principles of energy. Listen carefully. Principles of energy, formed energy, powerful principles of energy. Principles of consciousness awareness that exist 
to create harmony for themselves through havoc to you. Check. Check. It's the order of things. You can't blame them for it. Just like a leopard goes and hunts and kills the lamb. It's the order of things. You have higher evolutionary beings who you believe are supposed to be so sweet and loving and oh, because now I know light. Hey, these motherfuckers know how to get shit done now on a whole other level. They've learned to manipulate light. They've learned to condense it and change it and use it and take it and do what they want to do with it. But by that very act alone, they have created their own ceiling. Because once you start pimping off somebody, once you start using somebody, once you start working off of somebody like these preachers do, like religion does, like government does, once you start pimping people, you have to keep them at that level so that they can remain your food source. So you have higher levels, higher beings that are of the lower order that have to maintain that order through making you their vegetable garden. So your whole consciousness uh, envelope, your whole consciousness environment is being terraformed by these higher light beings who are actually on the lower strata once you get to know them. They look all fly. I mean, you know, they look bad. Somebody see a star walking down the street. You see Wesley Snipes. Go, Wesley. Go, Wesley. You say, oh, shit, Wesley Snipes, baby. Woo! What's happening? You all up in there, stars in your eyes and shit. That's the same way we would look at them. But they ain't no different than you. They just, they just got up to the tower by doing all kind of shit, making you believe that they're somehow different from you. But they have contained themselves by their actions. And they know that you have the ability to reach light speed. They know you can bypass this illusion that you are now functioning in. They know what your inheritance is, and they are about keeping you from getting it. Your havoc is their harmony. Check. Yeah. All right. Listen carefully. Ignorance is a food source. Ignorance is a food source. Ignorance causes disturbances because of its random acts of chaos due to the lack of awareness of self. So by your very act, you create disturbances that would not have been there based on your ignorance. So by your acts of ignorance, the dynamics for their sustenance is made ready for them. And you are ignorant as hell. That's planned. Disturbances in the natural, ordered, and harmonic flow of light create peripheral or ambient frequencies from which these principles of consciousness, or these fallen lords, extract and receive their nourishment and, susten and sustenance. Let me say that again. Disturbances in the natural, ordered, and harmonic flow of light create peripheral or ambient frequencies from which these principles of consciousness extract or feed and re receive their nourishment and sustenance. They are evil only in the sense that they cause us evil by our participation with them. Now, the idea behind evil is a concept based on the acculturation of behavior. What is good, we say this is good because for the mass and for the whole, we benefit. If you do a specific action, if you are participating in certain things and it creates something that's bad, and then we say, okay, that's evil. It's a consensus. Because people who are evil, some of the nicest guys, some of the nicest people, evil as hell. But when you get to know them, they're like, hey, what's up? You know, good, yeah. Evil, evil, evil. But then, if you're looking at that 
and you see them channeling that energy and you get all caught up in oh he's evil get thee behind me Satan and all pontification <laughs> you don't understand how evil you're becoming by putting up all that bullshit because you just now saying I'm going to be the sword of justice for, you know, for Jesus and all this shit and you just become just as evil as the bastard you're fighting how you going to get down and roll in the mud with somebody and not get dirty your damn self how the hell are these preachers telling me some shit about they going to fight Satan and you're going to fight Satan. You, know, you got to be Satan. You got to know Satan. I want to know everybody that this white man don't want us to know. I want to know more and more about Lucifer. Not, not from what they're telling you. Because ignorance is a food source. Most people or most entities that you call evil are actually acting upon self-preservation and are based on survival imperatives that were cultivated some billions of eons ago. We get trapped by them through our lack of instinctive self-awareness that the mind and the spirit inherits through a continual refinement of the corporeal envelope. Let me then say that again so that you'd understand it. We get trapped by these entities who feed from our ignorance, who feed from us. Through our own lack of instinctive self-awareness, our own lack of instinctive self-awareness, that the mind and the spirit is supposed to inherit through a continual refinement of the corporeal envelope. So the more you live, the more you should know. The longer you live, the more you're supposed to know. You ain't supposed to be stupid at 50. And Lord knows that's when you get real dumb. You get real scared and stupid and go run in the church. You start running to look for Jesus after you get that first pain in your back. Oh, it's coming close to the end. Heart attacking. Motherfuckers just catch Jesus and say, Lord, yeah, he came to Jesus. Because that's the only out they're going to give you. Is to come to Jesus. We become trapped by the envelope through the chromosomes chromosomes which contain the DNA and the genes. Now here's where we're going to start getting heavy. The chromosome is a DNA containing linear body of the cell nuclei responsible for the determination and transmission of hereditary characteristics. Ah, see that's the, that's the clinical definition. And that's what they want you to think that's all it is. Let me repeat that. The chromosome is the DNA containing linear body. Linear means straight. Of the cell nuclei responsible for the determination and transmission of hereditary characteristics. Now the chromosome then must have all of the information of the ancestors locked into it. This is why this devil, this geneticist, who is the new Gnostic, huh? The geneticist is the new Gnostic. He now has the ability to get into the library of your experience and start picking out what he wants of the information and start playing inside of who you are. Not who you want to be or who, who you are so that he will make you who he wants you to be. Now let's drop about a gene. A gene is a functional hereditary unit. It is a functional hereditary unit that occupies a fixed location on the chromosome. It occupies, carefully listen now, a fixed location on the chromosome. It has a specific influence on phenotype or a group and is capable of mutation. Now you'll understand why the gene can change what that has to do with you and mind control. Now, listen very carefully. There is something around the sun called the chromosphere. The chromosphere. Now, the chromosphere of the sun is made up of primarily hydrogen. Check the connection now. It is several thousand miles in depth and lies separate and above the photosphere which it surrounds. Okay? 
The chromatosphere surrounds the photosphere and is distinct and separate from the corona or the crown of thorns. Listen carefully. The DNA, I'm putting all the little uh, definitions in before we get to it. The DNA is a polymer or something of a high molecular weight. That's what a polymer means. Something that has a high density and molecular weight with millions of repeated linked units. The DNA is a polymer of the chromosome consisting of two long chains of alternating phosphate and dioxyribose units twisted into a double helix and joined by hydrogen bonds between the complementary bases adenine and thymine or cytosine and guanine. Now let me go back to what I'm saying and how it connects with the chromosphere of the sun. Go back to the top. The chromosphere of the sun is made up of primarily hydrogen. This is why I, was, I needed the blackboard. The chromosphere is made up primarily of hydrogen. All right? It is several thousand miles thick and lies separate and above the photosphere. Photo meaning the light sphere, the part that you can see, which it surrounds. Now the DNA has a alternating phosphate and deoxyribose units, linear, that is twisted into a double helix and joined together by hydrogen. <laughs> now, I said that to say that the so-called chromatosphere or chromosphere of the sun and the chromosomes of the cell, are you checking me? The chromosome of the cells are your inner sun. Remember, the cells are your internal little suns. You have whole solar systems that are cells. The chromosome and the chromosphere are together and are synergistically linked through the activity of the DNA. So the sun and you are intermittently connected through the DNA. Your chromosomes and the chromosphere, hydrogen bonds in the, chromos in the chromosomes, hydrogen is, as, the, as the, the majority, thousands of miles thick around the sun, there is a connection. You are being beamed information through the hydrogen, uh, uh, the chromosphere of the sun is connecting to the hydrogen coupling bonds in your DNA and giving it instructions to change. As a matter of fact, it's supposed to be giving you instructions to grow a third helix at this present time but because you are in light code lockdown and because they are polluting the atmosphere so that they filter out the instructions from the chromosphere to your chromosomes you the one that's getting all you know you might as well be back knuckle dragging that day you are being regressed purposefully to keep you as a food source for light The DNA represents a fixed projection of light as consciousness. The DNA represents a fixed projection of light as consciousness. As light travels through the ever-increasing density of matter, it begins to spiral in relationship to the elements that it gathers. Let me say that again. As light travels through the ever-increasing density of matter, it begins to spiral. It doesn't go into a straight line. It spirals. That's why when you look at the electrical line inside of here, it's twisted. Because all things, once it gets to this level, light travels, everything travels, atomics, everything travels in spirals. All energy travels in spirals. So, what constitutes your DNA is the coagulation of these elementals, these primordial archetypal elementals that are now coalescing around the, de the design of the intelligent mind to become you, man. So the DNA is essentially just following the instructions of universal mind to condense you into man, to God as man. Now all of this is coming to be because now you're going to see what they have to do in order to interrupt and, 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 and mess with who you are. Because the old forms of mind control don't work too tough no more. Evidence. Y'all ain't sucking on a neck bone.
the denser the elements themselves. Fix light through the densification of atoms. The elements fix light. Okay? They fix light through the densification of atoms who behave according to how many elementals and atoms join together. So the more compact, the more uh, uh, constricted these atoms and these elements work together, the more density of light you have. And the better aware, the more awareness you can actually encompass and the more manipulation of these atoms you can do through your mind. Because that's the secret. Manipulating the atomic structure, manipulating the DNA helix, manipulating the hydrogen connection so that you now begin to give instructions based upon your awareness, not through what they're telling you. Higher awareness, it must grow now. You must get deep into metaphysics at this time to save your life. This is not just about you saying, well, I'll, I'll study in school and we'll take this. And I may even take a little something of metaphysics. You know, bullshit. <laughs> You're going to have to put everything aside and study metaphysics now because that's how they're coming at you. They're coming at you through the metaphysical tip. The denser or more compact the atoms, the greater the concentration of light. If you manipulate the atmosphere or ionosphere, ion, ion is the name of John, that's why the book of John has nothing to do with no people. The book of John, if you notice, the four, four, the four, well, the four gospels, the first three are called the synoptic gospels, which means they're just synapse, they're, they're just a uh, compilation, real put together. Most of them are all put together, they're pretty much the same. But the last one of John don't seem to start off like anything else. All right? John is not actually a person. It was based upon ion, ionosphere, ion being a dynamic of radiation, a dynamic of light. So John, if you look at the word J, there was no J, it was I, I-O-N. John, is the book of John, is telling you in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. And if you understood what the word was and how they're using the word to manipulate your DNA, the word through frequencies, because remember, the word is a frequency, so they're playing with the word so that your words come out the way they want you to say it. They come out the way you want, they want you to think it. The manipulation of the word through frequencies. The word is a frequency. When I'm talking to you, I'm talking to you on a band based upon frequency transference from here to here to here. To there. It's about bouncing energies back and forth through sound frequencies. Well, they've learned to take the word and to use it for evil, to bypass your ability to filter the word into consciousness and put in this instructions to make you still think that you're an animal, to keep you on the lower, on the lower fields of awareness. If you manipulate the atmosphere or the ionosphere of our planet, you interface with the hydrogen source or higher nutritional base of light in the DNA. Hallelujah. I don't know where I was when I said that. <laughs> Let me repeat it. If you repeat, uh, whew, somebody bring me back down. I need to take a sip. Mm. Whew. You know, as I tell you, boy, you want a high? You really want a high? Get into metaphysics. Because once you start coming into self-realization, you start losing, I mean, things start moving and turning. And Let me put that back to you again. If you manipulate the atmosphere or the ionosphere of our planet, you interfere with the hydrogen source or the higher nutritional base of light for the DNA. The hydrogen anchors and I use that word, anchors, between the complementary bases that project towards the axis of the helix. Now, the word helix comes from the word helio, which means, hello. These things aren't named by accident. Now, the hydrogen anchors between the complementary bases. Now, this is the DNA. Just imagine the DNA and, and, and these little ladder, Jacob's ladder, yeah. connecting it all the way through. Okay? The hydrogen anchors, and I, I use the word hydrogen as an anchor because it anchors the elements 
that have coalesced into the helix. Hydrogen anchors those, uh, those, those, those elements, all right? Between the complementary bases that project towards the axis of the helix. Now helix is from the word helio, which is Greek for the sun. From one of the strands where it is bonded, in sequence becomes distorted and different in its ability to hold a light programming. Let me, re let me repeat that for you, don't worry. We'll try our best to, to really simplify it for us to get it. The hydrogen anchors between the complementary bases that project towards the axis of the helix from one of the strands where it is bonded together in a sequence become distorted and deficient in its ability to hold the light programming. When they screw with the ionosphere, and that's what the heart technology is all about. When they screw with the, heart, the, the, the ionosphere, they mess up, they distort, and they cause disturbances in how the light frequency, hydrogen frequencies come to this planet. And let me tell you something. Remember a long time ago I spoke about the fact that one of the great wars that took place on this planet caused the hydrogen canopy that was around our planet to fall and it fell. Remember I spoke about that? And it fell 40 days and 40 nights. And what do you call that? Flood. Flood? Right. Well, the ionosphere collapsed that particular hydrogen atmosphere that we had around our world collapsed. That atmosphere used to be in synchronicity with the sun's atmosphere. So we had an Edenic kind of energy here, giving us information that was piped along the line of star frequencies. Remember, the starlight you see are nothing but lattices or relay stations for light. And the more light 